guys i hope everybody's having a fantastic day whether you're watching this in the morning in the afternoon or in the evening i'm glad you're here i want to take a quick second and thank all the channel members thank you guys i appreciate you more than you know and i want to thank any of you who might be just coming in to check out the channel i appreciate you more than you know and if you like the content, if you'd like more EDC content to be kind of suggested to you and to know when I release content, if you hit that subscribe button down below and that bell notification icon, it will really help me out. Anyways, today I wanted to talk about probably the most unique collection or new, unique knife I've bought and brought into my collection. I say unique because this is going to be more of a kind of detailed overview video because to call this a review would mean that I've kind of lugged it around and, and used it a lot. Uh, I haven't because again, it's one of those knives to me that is, is more of a design piece, an art piece give you a little history on it it's a confusing piece it's a knife that i had seen at um that was not even that was a missed um thumb flick and it's still the blade came out it's got great retention but it's just got a very unique detent um this is a cybernix a this is a uh right knife if you take this knife apart which I haven't, but I am going to link you to a video by Love Them Knives where he does take it apart. And I learned some things about what's printed inside the scale. And I'll show you guys how it comes apart. But there's kind of an interesting philosophy and history beside, behind this knife. I just started following the designer on Instagram. It's king.freeman.x. goes by at like D-Lynx, D-E-C, L-Y-N-X. And there is some partnership with a company called Forever Steel. And I don't know, um, their logo is also inside the scale of at least Love Them Knives copy. Um, just, again, interesting because when you, I don't look at this knife in the same way that I look at my Hinder, my Jaeger. I picked this knife up for an entirely different reason, right? It, it is because A, I'm a weirdo, and B, it's a very unique, interesting knife. I've played with it a couple of times at different blade shows. I found it very unique. They had one apart at one of the blade shows I went to. Basically what you do, let me get my light out of my pocket. Basically what you do is you take, I would take my plastic, like a plastic crowbar, crowbar or something to put pressure right here on the back of that backspacer. And when you pop that, I'm not going to pop it right now, but literally you just take like your plastic pry bar and when you pop this little corner here it pops out the whole back spacer pops out and then you can pull it and remove it um, once you get the back spacer off it's very unique in that both these sides will rotate independently so if you rotate this side around where you got it closed over the blade where this lock bar is, you've got these T8 screws, three of them, that you can take off, and then this scale comes off. Then you rotate the, or excuse me, the, uh, yeah, the scale comes off. Then you rotate the liner, and you have the same three screws on the inside of this scale. And you release those three, the scale comes off, then you've got a complete liner, the knife still operates and you can adjust or take the pivot out. Now, this looks, I can see the phosphorus in there. I don't know if this knife has been updated since Love Them Knives did his, but his had loose ball bearings in the, uh, um, in the bearings, but I think his video is like a year old and this is one of the newer revisions. They still make this knife 
in three variations. I picked this up at White Mountain Knives. All three variations are available at White Mountain Knives. It is an expensive knife, right around 400 bucks, right under. You can use, if you want to buy anything there, the Javon 10 discount, save 10%. Um, it makes a difference, especially on more expensive knives. But this knife is unique and a collector's piece for a lot of different reasons. The main one is there's no external hardware that you'll see anywhere on the knife. It's 100% clean. You do have these Maker's Marks, Cybernex, the F506A, number 130, which is probably the number in production, M390 blade. And like I said before, there is a blade that's an A shape that looks like this. There's a B shape, which is shorter here, and then angles up. And there's a C shape that's just kind of straight up. And what you'll notice about this, besides, again, I look at this as a design marble, guys, and we'll cut with it in a second because it still cuts very, very well. If you look at the spine of this knife, it gets narrower from this back point all the way up to the tip. Now, you've got this flat grind that's kind of short, but you've got this thinner stock. So if you look at it, I don't know how well that's going to show. It's got a very interesting geometry. Is it the best cutting geometry? Absolutely not. But what I've noticed is when you look at these lines from a design standpoint, they all kind of make some weird futuristic stylistic sense. Um, the blade is perfectly centered. Again, I can't adjust it without taking it apart. So it's perfectly centered. You've got very good blade to handle ratio there, I think. Um, you've got a steel liner lock, or is that maybe a titanium liner with a, let, let me see if we can read that. I think it's the steel liner in there. But I don't know if y'all are getting a look inside how that comes apart. But the action on this knife is next level. It feels different, and I don't know if that's in the detent, if the detent's done differently, because this design from King.FreemanX or capital D-E-C-L-Y-N-X, um, I can't pronounce that and I apologize, is out of this world, guys. I mean, it's, it's really, it's next level to hold it, to flip it, to look at the lock up, the lock geometry, which is right about 20%, which is just perfect. To look at the backspacer, which I've seen in a video how that looks when it comes out. The way that both of these scales attach these liners from the inside. Um, it's just executed so well. I mean, it is. It's I, I, I played with it several times. It's not a knife that's necessarily a need knife for me by any stretch. It was something that I found extremely uh, just pleasing, I guess I would say, or just I was curious. I wrestled forever which, which, which blade shape to get, and I thought about getting, I think it's the C that's got the straight blade, but I figured no, and the grind is going to be thicker at the front than it is here at the back. So as you cut, you can tell, even though you've got a very sharp tip, you've got a thicker grind than you do back here. So as a cutting tool, I wouldn't want to use it to break down cardboard, but a functional tool, it definitely is. really cuts like a beast. 
It's got a unique feeling handle um, because it's just so minimalistic, so narrow, so rectangular. You know, it's got angles. If you look at this knife, there are no real soft corners. Um, it is angular, Tesla. -y. I think it even says when you go to Reich's website that this design was originally inspired by the Tesla truck by this DEC, D-E-C, L-Y-N-C, or L-Y-N-X, King.FreemanX, who's on Instagram with, with that name, of an absolutely next-level designer. Um, he, he's, he's come up with a knife unlike anything I've ever seen, with an action unlike anything I've experienced. Um, just... Yeah, I mean, I don't know what other words really are, are there to describe it. Just from an, living with this knife for 24 hours in my pocket, goes in and out of the pocket well. The clip's very forgiving. Comes up about this far, but doesn't even look really like a knife. There is no side to side, no up and down. Locks up like a bank vault. Falls shut flies open. Let me give you guys a couple of quick size comparisons. Let's look at it next to the Cold Steel 4 Max with the Saw 2 grind. Smaller than the 4 Max. And let's look at it next to our Savivi Baby Banter. It's going to be bigger than the Baby Banter. Let's look at it next to the Benchmade Bug Out. Be a little bit longer than the Benchmade bug out. Check it next to a Spyderco Paramilitary 2. Good bit shorter than a Spyderco Paramilitary 2. So, you know, a little bit larger than the bug out. Totally different blade geometry. Don't even know how to compare those. Um, but it does have a thicker handle. But again, in terms of sleek, elegant um i've never seen a knife that kind of checks all the design boxes so if we measure it back here at its widest it's 0.1275 if we measure it up here point zero three four five, and then the handle is right over half an inch at 0.52. You know I'm not good at these measurements, but we'll look at behind the edge back here. 0 0.0195. 0.0165. .0195. So again, just for what it is, which is, in my opinion, uh, a kind of design marvel. Um, that's kind of how I look at it. An art knife, maybe you'd say, but it's not just an art knife because it functions so well as a tool. Um, I, I, it's just, uh, it blew me away. I've never owned a right knife before. Um, yes, I've had experience with them at shows. I know they do a lot of more unique stuff, but this one took the cake. 4.6 ounces. Let's get some real measurements real quick. Let's start with it just like this. So closed. It comes in right around four and a half inches. Overall, it's right under 8 inches. The blade, if we go from the furthest point forward here, is right around 3 and a quarter. If I measure it from back here at the handle, it's more like 3 and 3 quarters. 
If I measure the inside of this handle, it is four inches. That's four inches from right here to right here. The sharpening choil's a little wonky, but that's just because the blade is so unique. Um, again, it's not something that, that bothers me. I don't see myself grinding this down a lot. I don't see myself using this as much as marveling with it. And it's just something that is unlike anything else in my collection, guys. I just wanted to share it with y'all. This is the Reich Cybernex A, I think is what they call it. The Cybernex A, look at the blade. Yes, it's the A. There is a B and a C. If for nothing else, you just want to look at them at uh, White Mountain Knives. I'll link, leave a link to where all three of these are um, at White Mountain Knives. And I'll also leave a link to Lee Love Them Knives older video where he takes this guy apart. Um, I'm sure I'll do a struggle bus video when I take it apart. Just not ready to yet. Looks like a kind of a little bit of work. Um, guys, I love you all. I appreciate you more than you know. The fact that you watch my content is humbling. I hope you find it entertaining. Um, you know, I hope you find it somewhat educational. You get to see things you might not always see. But I do love you all. I do ask, please look out for the guy or gal to your left. Please look out for the guy or gal to your right. Look out for each other. Go forward with love in your heart. Choose debate, not hate. I love you all. Peace.